certified ethical hacker, a golden name that will forever be remembered throughout history. Is this still worth it in 2024? Or did it lost its shine among cybersecurity community? In this video, we will take a closer look at CEH Practical Version 12. I will also share my experience on how I passed the exam and give you important tips. What is Certified Ethical Hacker? This is a cybersecurity exam that teaches you a wide range of techniques in hacking a computer system. Some notable techniques that you cannot find from other certifications are mobile hacking, denial of service, and evading honeypots. CEH is available in two types of exams. First is a four-hour multiple-based exam. The next one is a six-hour practical exam that gives you 20 challenges. This is the one I took as preparation for my OSCP. Once you pass both type of exam, you will attain CEH master status. Now let's explore CEH practical. Within the six hours, you will be given access to an online environment, which includes a Parrot OS and a Windows box. Since this is a proctored exam, I was not allowed to take a screenshot of the environment. That should have been helpful to give you some idea on how it looks and to prepare yourself ahead of time. But since I'm a good guy, let me draw a rough diagram based from my memory. On the right side, you will see the challenge questions, which I will discuss on another section. On same area, you will see a separate tab that will allow you to switch between machines. The large area on the left is reserved for the actual machine. Let's take a quick look at the course outline. As you see, compared to other certifications, the scope of CEH is larger because it includes techniques such as denial of service and IoT hacking. Other certifications such as OSCP doesn't include those topics because it teaches you penetration testing on a corporate network. On the other hand, CEH is a general ethical hacking course which teaches you a wide variety of techniques. This is one of the nice things I like about CEH as it exposed me to other types of attacks. Now let's discuss the fun part, the training and exam costs. There are different ways of training for CEH. Let's start with the most expensive which is buying the on-demand package for $2,339. This includes a lot of things, so let's quickly discuss them. The self-paced online video course is the main study material. Two versions of eCourseWare are included, which is similar to the online video, but in PDF format. This gives you access to CyberQ Labs, which consists of random vulnerable machines where you can use for practice. This is similar to OFSEC Proving Grounds and Hack the Box standalone machines. You will be also given a certificate of completion once you finish the self-paced online video course. These include vouchers for the CEH multiple choice and practical exams. It is worth mentioning that this also allows you to join global CEH challenges. These are monthly tournaments where you can compete with fellow students and be recognized in the leaderboards. Lastly, there are other materials that helps you prepare for the exams. If you are on a tight budget, you can buy the official textbook for $877. I'm not sure if it is available in digital format. Alternatively, there are also cheaper non-official CEH textbooks that you can purchase from Amazon or any similar sites. If you really can't spend anything for the training materials, you can just buy the exam voucher, which is $550. This is another thing I like about CEH. It doesn't force you to buy the training materials like what other certifications are doing. This is the approach I took. The question is, how did I prepare for the exam? Before I take CEH practical, I'm already practicing for OSCP. That means I already learned the foundations such as enumeration, privilege escalation, web hacking, and SQL injection. Even that's the case, I still didn't allow myself to be too confident, so I prepared for around two weeks. The first important thing I did is to understand the course outline. Since I only have 14 days to review, I list down the things I need to focus first. Those are topics that I'm not familiar yet and techniques that I didn't see in hacking vulnerable machines. Once I had an overview on what I need to learn first, I search for free resources in the internet to serve as my reference. For example, I don't have experience in DDoS attacks, so I studied the basic functionalities of HBing command. I don't know anything about IoT hacking, so I studied how to discover these kind of devices by looking for common ports and strings to search. I familiarized myself with the tools used in the exam. Since the exam will provide a Parrot OS VM, I made it my daily driver. I consolidated all the resources I gathered into a personal cheat sheet so that it will be easy for me to look up the information. I spent two to three hours each day practicing after work.
Well, that was fun and intense training. I have a few more tips, so please stay. A large percentage of the course is focused on hacking tools, so make sure you know how to use them. In fact, you will be given a network share which contains all the tools, so don't use anything outside of those. When I took the exam, the clipboard is not working, so be sure to type the answers and flags carefully. Analyze each question and scenario. Although some can be long, they will give you important details. The exam environment is very slow. Be patient and don't expect to run tools in multiple threads. Lastly, practice using grep and Wireshark filters. You may encounter many questions involving forensics or finding for something. CEH has come a long way over the years. It's been one of the reasons why people are inspired to be an ethical hacker, although it may seem it's losing its battle over others. I believe it still carries a significant value, especially for people starting like me. Thank you for staying with me until the end. This video is special because we reached 1,000 subscribers. Feel free to share your thoughts on the comments below. See you on the next one.